today we're going to talk um, to Tanya um, from the University of Waikato about the IT programs um, here. We're in the stunning campuses. We've had a walk around and Tanya has been very generous to show us around. Um, thank you, Tanya, for doing this with oh, us. No problem, my pleasure. Thank you. Um, I do want to talk about the IT courses. I know there's a lot of students um, that may have worked previously in their home countries or may have worked in New Zealand um, that may have lost their jobs. Um, and they are looking at really honing those skills in the IT space. Tanya, can you just talk to us about what programs you've got in the IT space? So I guess probably our most famous program is the Master of Cyber Security. We have quite a lot of interest in that. Um, we were the first university in New Zealand to offer a Masters of Cyber Security program. Um, there's a piece of software that I know that students um, all over the world have been downloading called Weka. Um, it's a down data mining software and it's developed here at Waikato University and has been down downloaded uh, over a million times. Wow, I didn't know about that. That's software, fantastic. yeah, so it is very well known and I have students um, regularly speaking to me when I'm overseas about the software um, and I usually go, oh yes, that's right. So, so it is a, a way that people identify Waikato University overseas. Um, so that's probably our most popular program. Um, we also have another program called the Masters of Information Technology. That program program is an industry focused program and it's very much as it as as I said it's sound as I sorry it's focused on helping students to um, gain a foothold into the industry and there's an internship at the end of that program as well. Uh, we also have undergraduate programs. We have a newly developed program called the Bachelor of Computer Science um, and we also have another two programs that are focused on computer graphic design and that's the Bachelor of Design and the Master of Design. Thank you. Just to give some perspective, um, a lot of the people that will be joining us um, are either within New Zealand and they're looking at upskilling. They may have had some background in IT. Some people are looking at just venturing into the IT space and there will be high school students as well that are finishing the schools and they're thinking, well, what do I really want to pursue yeah, a career in? Yeah. So can you just tell us about the Masters in Cyber Security? How long is that course and what are the entry requirements for that specific course that you're looking for? So it is a very advanced course. It's one and a half years and it includes a research dissertation. Um, students do need to have an IT background in order to be eligible for that program. So what they're looking for is people who have really strong programming skills as also some networking skills as well. So usually they're looking for people with an IT, like a Bachelor of Computer Science or a Bachelor of IT, um, so they do have that strong programming um, knowledge. And what about the other program, which is the Masters in IT? Yeah, so that's similar, not so much the networking experience, but definitely they're still looking for people who ha already have that coding or programming okay. experience and background. So it really helps and we find that the students who do have a solid background in that area um, are much more capable and it's, it's just um, a little bit um, less difficult for them. In the Masters of Information Technology, we also have a uh, 240 point program. So normally the MIT is 180 points, but for students who don't have an IT background, so they may be coming from a bachelor degree, but they're really interested in gaining some uh, qualification in IT, um, they can do the 240 point program, and that includes a boot camp, which will get their programming skills up to scratch. So I'm going to try and um, make sure that I understand this correctly. So if someone's coming in, say, from a bachelor's of a non-IT degree, Correct. they can actually yeah. go in for the Masters in IT, which is a two-year program. Yes. But if you've got a background in IT previously, yeah. you've worked, you've got you know your qualifications in that field, you can actually go in for a year and a half program Correct. in Masters in IT. Yes, okay. yes, cool. that's that's right. Yeah. Um, I do want to ask you about um, industry, you know, connections. Do these programs have internships built into the programs? Yeah, so the Masters of Information Technology does have an internship at the end of the program. So what they'll do is when students come into the program, um, you'll sit down with our, we have a internships coordinator in the school um, and he'll work out what kind of internship you're interested in doing um, and he'll start to look for an internship for you um, as you're progressing through So the, the university course. is actually finding we places find, where students We find can our internships for students uh, and 
they also get paid to do the internship, so it's a nominal um, fee of about 5,000 New Zealand dollars, so that will cover travel expenses and if they have to live away from Hamilton while they're doing it, that will travel. That because what I understand back. from um, students that go into the IT courses, these are slightly mature students that are just looking for that step in the door. Correct. And I think internship is one place yep. where they can actually use that, yes. to, you know, get that connection That's going. That's exactly right. It is a really integral part of the program and it's a really important part of the program. Um, and it's also great for students because it helps them connect with employers and employers can see how skilled they are and generally, um, more often than not, students actually get a job out of the internship. Thank you. Um, for those um, that are listening and are keen to enrol and start the process, how do you suggest that they go about starting and contacting? So I usually strongly recommend that students approach a consultancy like AIMS because we find that students who go through uh, somewhere like AIMS are generally, um, they'll usually submit all the correct documentation because AIMS knows what the university needs from applicants and the applications are usually processed much faster and it's much easier and much less stressful for students. Um, so that's what I would recommend. I understand you have some open days coming up soon. That's right guys, we've got open days starting from the 26th of March all the way till the end of May. Details will be shared but those are days when you can pop into our offices, ask us as many questions as you like and we will help you with the end-to-end -end process. Thank you. Thank you Tanya. No problem. My pleasure.